What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. So it's been a minute. I went out of state for a little while, met up with some old homies, and um, I've been playing catch up. Just getting back to work and getting caught up with my housewife stuff. So thanks for being patient and stay tuned for, um, you know, gonna handle Orange County and a double Atlanta recap. So that's all coming, but here's parts one and two of The Real Housewives of New Jersey season 13 reunion. So part one starts off with an Irish themed castle set. There are portraits of all the ladies up there. Like their faces are like cropped onto like these like portraits of these like queens and other royals and stuff like that. And side note, I didn't really like Teresa's dress that much. Like seeing it like out on stage, like in motion and such. First of all, when I saw the photo, I thought it was a dress, but it's actually another jumpsuit. She wore one last season, so I don't know, I wasn't really with it. And the more I kind of looked at it, I feel like it was just really empty up here. You could use like a little necklace of some sort. Um, I really like her hair though, the short little crop job. But um, yeah, Teresa, seeing it like out in motion, it just really it wasn't really it for me. So that's a little side note for me, but we welcome everyone up to the stage. There's some commentary on how Melissa entered the stage like like a boxer. She had like a little hoodie up, she had people all around her. It was just like very much that vibe. Andy's very impressed with all the looks. Right as they're about to start, Joe Judice calls Teresa. Um, she answers and he's asking her to be like, oh, um, ask Jen if Bill does like eye bag surgery, like under eye surgery or whatever. Uh, he said it's for his uncle, allegedly. He's like, I don't need that yet, but. And I don't even think Joe could come to the state, so it's not for him, but it's for his uncle. Um, and yeah, Andy reads the ladies. He says that Danielle's look does not look like it was pulled out of the hamper, so a little funny callback to that. Margaret says that she did not leave her arsenal at home, so she's ready to play. And he says he's gonna start with Teresa, and um, she's like, give me a hand, give me a hand. And he puts his hand on her chest and just kind of feel her heart beat. And it's very awkward. It's like, okay, Teresa, like, whatever. She's like, oh, please, namaste. Like, thank you, Jesus, blah, blah, blah. So Teresa's on one. Melissa's just there, like... <laughs> but, um, yeah, and Andy asks what Teresa and Melissa's goals for the day are. And they're both basically like, I just want to close this chapter and move on. And, yeah, and they're both kind of in mutual agreement with that. Teresa speaks on how she's in her love bubble and how, like, the hardest thing of it all was done with her family, you know, just treating Louis like trash. So immediately going in on it, Melissa's like, what do you mean we treated Louis like trash? And Teresa's like, were we not watching the same show? Blah, blah, blah. So getting on, on into it right away. Um, Andy asks why Dina dropped out of being Teresa's bridesmaid at the last minute. And Teresa says that's because Dina didn't want to be on camera. And when Andy's like, well, she could have just not signed the release, she said that Dina didn't want to... She didn't want people to know she was going to be back in Jersey. Because you'll remember, G uh, Dina and her husband, they were brutally assaulted in the home invasion, and it had to do with, like, her ex-husband. And her ex-husband is actually Caroline Manzo's brother-in-law, like... Caroline and Dina both married brothers. So, like, Dina's ex-husband is Caroline's husband's brother. And I believe at the time, Caroline and Dina weren't, already weren't speaking, and Caroline, like, defended Dina's ex or something. So, all kinds of drama with that. You know, if the Manzos kind of run deep with the stereotypical bullshit, so I'll say with that. Um, and, yeah, Dina says that, you know, they're all good, and um, she says that Dina's husband and Louie did not go into business together. They did not have a business deal. Because Joe Gorga brought this up back when Pizzagate was a subject. He was like, oh yeah, me and Louie, we fell out of our business deal. Just like Louie fell out with Dina's husband and now Teresa and Dina have beef, blah, blah, blah. But, and almost to said about that was like, oh no, Joe shouldn't have said that. Dina's husband doesn't want to be on the show at all, blah, blah, blah. So it sounds like there might there may have actually been a deal going on, but Melissa acknowledges that Joe should not have revealed that because private information basically. That's how it sounded. I'm just gonna acknowledge this right here and now. I think that Teresa was lying through her teeth this entire reunion. I really do, and I'm saying this as someone who is not Team Teresa or Team Melissa. I think that everyone has fumbled the bag at some point in the past, like, decade of the bullshit, you know what I mean? And, like, 
even before then. So, like, I just, in this instance of the reunion, I just think Teresa was lying to her teeth. Now, there are probably other instances of Joe and Melissa lying about Teresa and stuff like that. But in this hearing now, I just really see Teresa just li talking out of the side of her fucking neck and just lying, like, I don't know. I just really see that right now, just full disclosure. A viewer then asks why Teresa didn't invite Melissa's mother, Donna Marco, like, simply out of respect for her father. She's like, hey, your dad really liked Donna Marco. Why didn't you invite her to your wedding? Like, purely out of respect for him. And Teresa reiterates that, like, she didn't want to just invite Donna Marco and not invite the sisters, which is just, like, it's just such an excuse, to be honest. Um, Melissa then says our family has been there for Teresa. She's like, oh, when you needed to introduce Louis to people, to your family, you introduce them to my family because they're what you had. Basically saying that, like, they're there for Teresa when she needs them, but, like, she'll toss them aside when she doesn't. But Teresa says otherwise, and she's like, oh, you guys never invited me to dinner. Literally. And Melissa's like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, there was this time and that. Like, she lists off instances. And Teresa's like, oh, I think I invited myself that time because you never invited me. And there are, like, literally photos on screen of, like, them all at dinner together at the Jersey Shore, I believe. And, yeah, it's just really weird. Um, Teresa then claims that, like, oh, and, um, Joe was actually the one who brought Louis onto the show. It's all about the show, the show. And Louis didn't even want to be on TV, and I didn't want him to be on TV yet. And Melissa's like, um, excuse me. And she says that back when they were on Ultimate Girls Trip, Louis and was talking to Joe about, like, oh, let's go fly out to, I forget what island they were at. I think it was, like, Turks and Caicos. I forget what island specifically they are at. Somewhere out in the Caribbean. But yeah, and um, Louis was allegedly trying to get him to fly out there and you know, make a little pop in, be on the show or whatever. Um, who knows if that's true, but I'm also kind of like, did Joe invite and choose Louis on the show? And I don't know, but it's like, it's just so stupid. It's like, do you really think that Louis didn't want to be on the show? Do you really think that Louis didn't know who you were? I bet that Louis fucking knew exactly who Teresa was. He knew how he could run into her. He knew how to schmooze her and wiggle his way in. I, and I believe that he also has fucking files on everyone else. Like, I really do believe this shit about Louis. Because in response to this all coming out in the show, um, Bo Deedle was like, oh, if Louis were to hire me for this, it would cost him a cr an exorbitant amount of money. Like, that wouldn't be feasible. And I'm like, you're not saying you didn't do it, though. I'm sure you could have fucking hooked up with some resources or done it fucking pro bono, or Louis may have hooked you up in some other ways. I don't know, bitch, but I believe everything that's being alleged against Louis, which I haven't really got into yet, but we'll get to it in a little bit. Speaking of which, both Melissa and Margaret say that Louis knew exactly what he was doing when he was finding Teresa, and they also say that he tried to go with Alexia Napola first, like before he got with Teresa. Now, I'm not sure about that because Alexia's already with Todd and they've been there for a little amount of time, so I don't know if it was like before she got with Todd. I don't know. I know Alexia and Teresa are like buddy buddy now. I don't know. That's kind of interesting, you know. And it's so funny because like Alexia and Teresa have like been compared to each other, like because they're just so fucking hard headed and like stupid and like <laughs> the same kind of personality. Um, it's kind of interesting. Teresa then calls Melissa a liar, and Melissa's just like, "Oh, this is the same old fucking narrative." Teresa like get some new fucking ammo. Teresa says that's gonna be over after today since Melissa's leaving the show. Melissa, she's both of them basically saying, Oh, I'm not going anywhere. But they're both kind of adamant about, like, I'm not doing a show with that bitch. Fuck that bitch. But I'm not going anywhere. I'm not gracefully leaving. So who knows what's gonna happen? Um, Teresa says she doesn't know how they both coexist and that Melissa will for sure be out of her life after the reunion. And of course, Andy segues to the hairstyle that broke the internet, Teresa's, you know, wedding updo. And um, he acknowledges that Margaret was just so damn emotional during the ceremony. And she says that, you know, it was bittersweet. Teresa walked out by herself. You know, Joe and Melissa weren't there. Parents weren't there. Like, she looked so beautiful. It was like just a very emotional combination of feelings. And there's actually a little moment between Teresa and Margaret before they have a little spat. And we see more of this in part two. We then get a segment on Dolores and Polly. And Dolores says that being with Polly has really helped her, like break down these walls that she's had up since forever, basically. Um, she says she'll always be there for Frank, but 
she can't have two number ones in her life. And, like, she and Frank's dynamic just had to change in order for her to have, like, to have this kind of relationship. But she says that he's still her family and all that stuff. Um, she acknowledges that there's some major differences between her relationship with Polly and David. With David, they're basically just, like, ha living their own separate lives, but would, like, you know, meet up and, like, bone every once in a while. But with Polly, he's really down to be a part of her life, which she loves. And um, after acknowledging that she and Polly have, like, a real commitment to each other, Andy asks, you know, how long has Polly been divorced? And Laura says that he's not divorced. He's been, like, separated for 14 years. And everyone's like, what? And she says, oh, it's because he didn't really have a reason to, you know, get divorced. He didn't think he'd ever remarry, blah, blah, blah. And he's from Dublin. So I'm like... I think it might be, like, you know, just the traditional kind of thing, like, oh, we got married and under the eyes of God, we're, not, we're still gonna, we don't, we're not gonna divorce, but we're just gonna, like, separate. You know what I mean? Because there are also people in my hometown who are kind of like that, of people of an older generation of a certain age, you know, it'd be like, oh, like, they've been separated for, like, decades, but they won't get that divorce because, you know, it's, they, they made this commitment and you, you, that kind of mindset. So I think that's what it is, to be honest with you. Uh, she said he's going to get divorced, though, because they're talking of marriage, of course. But they get a little Danielle segment. It's major focus on her relationship with her brother and basically the confusion surrounding their fallout. She says that they're going on three years without speaking, but she's actually going to see him at um, the next day at her grandmother's at their grandmother's wake. So, um, and I just see some major similarities between like Danielle's situation and a situation that happened on my father's side of the family. Um, just like there's some major beef with uh, my uncle on that side. He basically fell out with everyone except for, like, one of my aunts. Um, my grandparents, like, sent him a gift to commemorate, like, the birth of his first child. He, like, sent it back, which is exactly what happened with Danielle. Like, she sent her brother a gift, like, this little cute sweater for her niece, and he sent it back in the mail and just all this bullshit. And it all, like, ended once my great-grandfather passed away. And it's just sad that, like, it seems that so, so often, you know, like, when, when these rifts happen, someone has to fucking pass away or some major tragedy has to happen before, like, it brings them back together. Like, they're not just gonna do it for the sake of, like, celebrating life. It's always gonna be out of, like, grief and almost, like, dis I don't wanna say desperation, but you know what I mean? It's like, it, it takes this traumatic-ass thing to bring everyone back together, and it's like, damn, like, really? You know, so just see... So these similarities, you know what I mean? It's uh, a really sad situation. Everything's all good now on that side. You know, everyone's all close on my dad's side. You know, just some, there's some different drama now. Not that same drama, but uh, that's what my dad's side is. But that's story for a different day. A viewer then asked Danielle, point blank, is there anything that you did to cause this rift? And Danielle's like, no, I'm just as like flabbergasted as everyone else. And she then pivots to Margaret. And she's like, I'm actually hoping if there's something that you may have in your arsenal, like... Is there anything you can tell me? You know, because remember, during the season, Margaret threatened to, like, call up her, um, Danielle's brother and her sister-in-law and all that shit. So Danielle's basically like, is there anything? And Margaret's like, no, I, I want nothing but, you know, reconciliation and love for your family. I don't want you guys to fight. You know, it kind of has a moment. And Andy then brings up Margaret's vitriol during Ireland when she was like, oh, you want to forgive but you can't forget? And after you're going to have problems in your family for the rest of your life, blah, blah, blah. And she made Danielle cry. And Margaret explains, like, look, I'm sorry if that came off really harsh. But it's just that the whole forgive but don't forget mentality has just been, like, the mantra for New Jersey. And she's like, that's bullshit. You're desperate to reconcile with your brother. It's not going to happen with this, I can forgive but I can't forget. That's not going to fucking happen. Like, and Margaret basically is just saying that, like, that's the narrative that's been on that show like for years and she's over it. Everyone appears to take that in. Jennifer speaks up and says that she actually agrees with that. Um, and yeah, and Margaret says that, you know, she was nothing but nice to Danielle at first. She brings up that like, oh, and I helped you with your business. She brought that up a few times. It's like, oh, I helped you with your business, blah, blah, blah. Um, whatever. But she said that Danielle flipped on her. Um, a viewer that asked Melissa where she sits with Danielle following the whole um, finale party situation. But Teresa winds up accusing Melissa and Margaret of, like, trying to cozy up to newbie Danielle in order to, like, lure her into her side or whatever. Some bullshit. Basically, it's like, 
oh, you guys tried to get down on your side. You had to be nice to her, but it didn't work. And like, we we're just being nice to the new girl. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, um, Danielle then slams Margaret and Jackie's mean girl comments about her all season long. Uh, but Margaret kind of pacifies the matter. She's like, um, Danielle, look, we were fighting at the time. You had a great first season. Blah, blah, blah. Um, and she also throws some shade. She's like, and you've gotten plenty of endorsements, which, you know, other people on this cast have not done, which is a clear shade at Jennifer. And Jennifer's like, fuck you. I don't need fucking endorsements. Blah, blah, blah. Just, it's... <laughs> it's actually really fucking funny. It's like out of the fucking blue. Andy then says he was surprised at how emotional Danielle is. Because remember, she's this big old tough girl from Staten Island, but she like runs away from conflict and like breaks down in tears all the time. You know what I mean? Like all this bullshit. Um, and they all said it was just due to shock. You know, she just was not prepared for this. She then segues to her drama with Rachel. She says that, like, oh, I don't know how often I can say it. Rachel twisted my words, blah, blah, blah. And she and Rachel go at it, same old back and forth. And Andy asks Margaret, how did you react? Like, what did you think when you saw the actual scene of Danielle and Rachel talking about, you know, the arsenal in the store? And Margaret admits that, you know, the conversation was more mild than she and that she initially anticipated or whatever. However, Margaret and Dolores both say that Rachel didn't twist uh, Danielle's words. Jennifer says otherwise. She's like, no, of course she twisted Danielle's words, blah, blah, blah. People decide with, you know, who you expect them to side with. Except Dolores. Dolores seems to be, you know, able to navigate, you know, different, like, side with different people, if you will. She's always gonna, like, she's heavily aligned with Teresa, but, like, she'll side with other people if needed, I feel. We then get some more back and forth between Danielle and Rachel. Same old bullshit. Um, Andy then says that he just didn't think it was a big deal. Margaret agrees, and I'm like, oh, oh, now Margaret, like, <laughs> you are heavily involved in this beef. And she's like, they're bringing it to me. And I said, well, you were running with it as well, Margaret. If it wasn't a big fucking deal, why did you get run with it? Like, I don't know. It seems like, like I have to call Margaret out on that. It's like, Margaret, like, stop. Everyone agrees that the bullshit dragged on for way too long. And he calls it, like, the dumbest drama ever or whatever. And it's like, well, damn, like, wh when did all this, all of a fucking sudden we get to the reunion and this newbie drama is the dumbest shit ever. And it's like, well, why didn't anyone say this, like, during the fucking season? Okay, girl. Um, Dolores then basically gets Danielle and Rachel to call it truce, and it's all good from there. We get the Melissa segment. It's mostly about their new house they're bullied about on social media. We get a viewer question about um, why Teresa decided to publicly shame Antonia on the Ireland bus when she was like, oh, Antonia didn't go to Melania's Sweet 16, blah, blah, blah. And Teresa says like, oh, well, I was just answering a question that Rachel asks. And I shouldn't have answered that because it was a setup question. Rachel denies this, but Teresa's like, no, it was a setup question. I've been here for 13 years. I know a setup question when I hear it. I'm like, well, you're the one who answered it, bitch. And... There's some back and forth between that. Um, Dolores then says, I don't think it was a setup question, but I would expect Rachel to ask Melissa that rather than Teresa. And I said that as well. I was like, why is Rachel, who's friends with Melissa, asking Teresa this question? So I don't know. It's like, I kind of see what Teresa's saying with it being like a setup question. But again, Teresa's just like, she keeps interjecting during this reunion. She keeps, like, she just has this kind of, like, attitude and shit. And just very, like, it's like, ugh. Like, to be honest. And yeah, there's some more back and forth. A lot of it about the kids. Um, Andy brings up some of the comments that Joe and Melissa have made about Gia. And, you know, um, Trace really goes in on, like, the whole, like, oh, you, the whole put food on the table bullshit, blah, blah, blah. Um, Teresa accuses Melissa of trying to act like the peacemaker among the children for the cameras. All this bullshit relating to the kids. Um, Melissa then brings up all that she and Joe have done for um, Teresa. Um, but as soon as Teresa got a man, basically, uh, they're pieces of shit. Um, Melissa mentions how they drove Gia to college. And someone on Twitter was like, oh, wow, because Gia went to Rutgers. And they saw that it's, like, literally a 45-minute drive from, like, where they live. And it's like, oh, wow, you drove Gia 45 minutes. Ooh. <laughs> so, just that shit. Um, 
After Melissa and Teresa finished their argument, a viewer asked a question about um, Margaret's ball player comment to Melissa. Um, and Teresa interjects, she's like, oh my gosh, that's so disgusting. I don't know why you guys would even say that. The brother who I grew up with wouldn't have been cool with that at all, blah, blah, blah. Um, Teresa was really not feeling Melissa or Margaret, really. We then learned that Jennifer and Laura, they're still buddy-buddy. They're hanging out still. And Jennifer says that Laura thinks that Margaret blocked her from joining the show. And Margaret's like, I wanted her to join the show. We were best friends for years. I wanted her to join as my best friend. And then um, Andy chimes and he's like, if they were best friends and then fell out, don't you think that we would want Laura to be on the show? So basically saying like, no, like there's no blocking Laura or whatever. Um, so yeah, and they're like, no, yeah, they would love to bring on my enemy. And then Teresa chimes, it's like, yeah, that's what they did with bringing Melissa and Joe on. You know, they brought them on when we weren't cool, blah, blah, blah. So it was just a lot of Teresa and Melissa, like, jumping into arguments and going out with each other when, like, they weren't even the subject. It was really crazy towards the end, to be honest. Of course, Teresa then brings up, like, oh, I don't even know why Melissa and Joe came on the show. But Andy and Dolores are just over this. Like, this is such an old fucking conversation. Like, are you kidding me right now? This, they're really over it. Teresa then brings up something that Jacqueline Lorita told her, which is that, um... Joe and Melissa were hanging out with Joe Judice's ex-business partner who ratted on Teresa and got her put in jail in order to save his own skin. And so she brings that up, and then um, Melissa, she's like, oh no, we don't even know him, what are you talking about? And Teresa's like, oh no, like, yes you do, your, uh, your husband knows him. Melissa's like, oh, you said the same shit about Caroline Mansley, you accused her of conspiring against you. Then Teresa says, oh, I take that back about Caroline. I think that you and Joe put me in jail. And then there's all these gasps and shit, and then it's to be continued, and I'll go into part two. So it's part two, Andy's basically trying to reason with Teresa. Um, Teresa says that Joe and Melissa are not responsible for putting her in jail, but they're still rubbing shoulders with, like, the someone who is. Um, Melissa says, again, that she doesn't know who the guy is, but Teresa refutes this. Um, Dolores is like, oh, like, I don't believe that a brother could put his own sister in jail. No, I don't believe that at all. And Teresa says, oh no, it wasn't. The thing is, they were trying to put Joe Judice in jail, but then I got tangled up in it. And now that, I have thought that before, because again, it's all speculation about that. And I'm like, if they are involved, I'm sure it was to try to, against Joe Judice, but Teresa was more involved than they initially anticipated. Um, but yeah, then Melissa proceeds to kind of uh, pull out this nasty text message that Jacqueline sent Jackie uh, about Teresa before they made up. Basically trying to like discredit Jacqueline's claims and like her character. Um, Melissa's reading this text out about what Jacqueline was calling Teresa all these bad names and shit. And Teresa and Dolores, they're both like, oh, Melissa, like you just put a target on your back. Like sleep with one eye open with Jacqueline. And I was kind of like, how bad is Jacqueline Lorita? Is she like, some of these New Jersey bit, and Jacqueline is also tied to um, the Manzo family because she's married to um, Caroline and Dina's brother. Anything you have to do with the Manzos gets pretty shady if you dig a couple fucking feet. That's all I'm gonna fucking say. We then get a segment on Rachel. She speaks on how like, this is her first season. She was filming with two kids under two. And she also says she has no nanny or anything. She had a lot of help from, like, uh, her mom, I believe her, like, grandma and stuff like that. So, really crazy with that. Uh, she talks about revisiting some old beat between her and Jennifer about their nose jobs. They kind of briefly spat and kind of get over it. Uh, Rachel then says that Jaden's adoption is finalized, and she acknowledges his birth mother's commentary, like, on some blogs. I believe, I don't know if it was Radar, was it Radar Online? So, some, a couple different blogs. Uh, or maybe it's Daily Mail. I don't fucking remember. One of those kind of blogs. Um, Rachel then brings up that Louie actually had someone reach out to Jaden's birth mother. They found out, like, what prison she went to, where she lived, yada, yada, yada. And uh, Teresa's like, oh, what? I don't know anything about that, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, Rachel sounds pretty fucking sure in her accusation. Margaret then chimes in, and uh, Teresa tries to, like, shut her up real quickly. And Marge is like, oh, I've never hired a private investigator. I've never, like, dug for information. 
Um, and Teresa's like, oh, it's because you can't afford it. It's because you can't afford it. It's because you can't afford it. And I'm like, huh? And Melissa's like, wow, what a great catch. All you have to do is just spend more money, everyone. It can be as evil as you want. Yeah, just like Louie. All this bullshit is really fucking random. Um, Melissa says that Teresa's whole namaste peacemaker shtick is bullshit. She says that. The first scene this season where, where um, Teresa and Margaret met up and made peace. Complete lie. All for the cameras. Complete bullshit. So, Melissa's just really going off and I do not disagree with her. The nice Jewish girls then enter. Jackie Goldschneider and Jen Fessler. Um, Jen has had a facelift, a nose job, and she's lost all kinds of weight. I don't believe that she's confirmed that she's on Ozampic like Dolores has, but it's, you know, she lost a lot of weight. Uh, Jen dishes on people being offended over her story about having sex with James Gandolfini because people were like, oh, he's dead. He can't even respond to this, blah, blah, blah. And Jen was like, well, guys, like, I wasn't always this old hag. Like, come on, I used to be hot. <laughs> like, I kept talking about that. Um, Andy then speaks on how Jackie is radiating. Uh, she says that coming back as a friend was kind of hard, you know, because she was, like, just kind of getting to a point of recovery with her, like, ED and then, um you know, getting basically demoted, but she was kind of trying to push through and um, be the best that she could be. She also acknowledges that it was the best thing that could have happened for her. Um, and again, you know, I think it's because Jackie acknowledged that um, the show and some of the drama coming from the show was causing her to regress with her eating disorder. Because Kyle Richards and Crystal Minkoff, they've also talked about, you know, their um, eating disorder and stuff like that. But like, they haven't spoke, they haven't like named the show as a stressor. Jackie did. So I really think that's why uh, she became a friend of, but she really did good in her role, to be honest. Um, Jackie then shares her opinion on Ozampic. She says like, I don't think it's a bad thing to want to lose weight, but she's had studies have shown that like the, mo the minute you like stop using Ozampic, you gain all the weight back. And like, that's where the problem comes in. Cause like you're addicted to being thin, blah, blah, blah. And you're gonna try to, get back to that point by other unhealthy methods. So that's what she says. Kind of speaks on that a bit. Winter talking about the Ireland trip. Everyone said they had a great time. We speak on how Melissa was lit on the bus and she was like all drunk, don't care. She was gonna drunk dial her ex. Teresa says that she thought it was very inappropriate for Melissa to be saying that. And Melissa's like, do you think I was serious? Do you think I was serious or what? But Teresa's like, it doesn't matter, you're married. And um, Teresa says that if she were not getting married, she would have made a bigger deal on the bus about it. Um, then Melissa brings that was like, well, you're married and you're talking about Channing Tatum and shit like that. Like, what about, so again, just some bullshit. We then check in with the men backstage and notably they're in two distinct groups. There's one group with Frank, Joe Gorga, Joe Benigno and John Fuda. And the other group with Louis, Bill Aiden, Nate Cabral or Danielle's husband and Polly. So two different groups, totally different areas. Um, so yeah, we'll get more into that later. Back with the ladies, they're discussing some of the Jersey-isms from the past season. Like Teresa being like, oh, I'm as raw as, as a cucumber. Or like, oh, it's a breath of fresh air, shit like that. Ovira brings up how like, oh, Danielle, she said conversate and Margaret was giving her shit about it. But conversate is a word, it's in the dictionary, you're vindicated. And Margaret's like, oh, well, it's because it was slang for so long and it was added later on. And Danielle's like, oh no, it's a word, it's a word, I was right. And Margaret's like, I just wouldn't use it on a college essay. And it's just a little funny thing, that's what language is. Language is so beautiful, it's always evolving, always changing, so I'm like, shut up, Margaret. Uh, we have to speak on Margaret recently losing Jan, her ex-husband. Um, they spoke every day, and it's interesting because like, Margaret's stepdaughter is like still angry at Marge for cheating on Jan with Joe Bedigno. But Jan was over it. Like Marge and Jan chatted all the time. So it's kind of weird. Uh, she said things are still hard with her stepdaughter, but with everyone else, she's all good. Um, and you had asked why Margaret took issue with Teresa and Jennifer commenting on how she's like better to have as a friend than as an enemy. While Jackie said the same thing last season, it was no problem. And Mark says it comes down to the intention, ultimately, like, Teresa and Jennifer brought it up to, like, warn people about Margaret and kind of diminish her character. Whereas Jackie was just like, oh no, Margaret is a formidable foe. Like, it just is what it is. Uh, you're then asked where Margaret gets all her dirt from, and 
Marge ultimately denies having dirt on everyone, which I don't really believe. I'm sure Margaret does have an arsenal, but like in the sense of like, it, it's like how like all fucking, all these countries have like fucking nuclear weapons. It's like, they're all just chilling. Like, you know what I mean? Just like, I like how Marge is, you know, she just has it there in case she needs it, you know, whatever. Uh, Andy then asks what she did to piss Laura off so badly, her ex-best friend. And Margaret just says that she and Laura fell out and um, she said that Laura was just trying to spark drama and get onto the show. Basically said that Laura chose like prospective fame over their friendship, which they've had since they were like, you know, uh, 12 years old or whatever. Uh, Jennifer then reveals that she told Melissa about the Laura rumor off camera. So like, Jennifer told Danielle about the rumor that Laura told her about how Melissa was allegedly making out with a guy. And then Danielle obviously told Melissa. But Jennifer is saying that she told Melissa about that beforehand off camera. Um, no, like Danielle had no idea about this. And he asked Jennifer, why were you acting like it was some big secret when you knew that you told Melissa? And Jennifer's like, that's the way the narrative was playing out, Andy. And then Marge is just like, she went to, she's a fucking actress. She hijacked the season, blah, 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 all this bullshit. And again, Danielle had no clue. And she's kind of like, did you guys set me up? And Margaret and Rachel and Melissa are like, yes, they set you up. You did their dirty work for them, bitch. Uh, Jennifer, she's like, I'm sorry if that's how it seems, but that's not, it was not my intention, blah, blah, blah. And Danielle's like, I choose, I'm choosing to believe that they didn't set me up. I am nobody's pawn. They did not set me up. But Margaret and Rachel in particular, they're like, no girl, like you were used. They set you up and you were a pawn. But Danielle's just like, oh no, I'm not. And Andy says, I feel like you're gonna walk away from this with a different opinion. So he's already sensing that like next season when Danielle comes back, cause Danielle, Danielle is coming back. When Danielle comes back, this is not confirmed. I'm just like, there's no way they're gonna ax her. I think Danielle and Rachel are both coming back, to be honest. Um, she's got some beef with Jennifer, I presume. Melissa then says that she ultimately blames Jennifer and Teresa for the whole thing. She's like, Teresa for um, initially only telling Joe about it and not Joe and Melissa, and Jennifer for telling Danielle about it on camera, leading Danielle to tell her about it on camera as well. Um, Melissa and Teresa argue over how Teresa handled the matter, and Andy's getting fed the fuck up. They're just going back and forth, talking over each other. It's very just, I cannot imagine how annoyed Andy actually is to be in the, you know what I mean? Because the editing, like they edited it in a way to make it like more palatable, obviously. It's like, imagine just being there. Oh my goodness. Oh, uh, we then flash to the men again. Uh, and they say that Louis has poisoned the dynamic in the group, like among the men in particular. And Frank and Tanya in particular has the bone to pick with Louis. Because Frank's son, Lil Frankie, he went to go work with Louis, and I guess one day, like, the business just went belly up, and Louis basically allegedly, like, ghosted Frankie. Like, didn't fucking let him know or whatever, and Frankie's just kind of like, what? Like, what did I do? Like, what the fuck? So, there's that going allegedly. Um, and yeah, it's just kind of all this negative sentiment, again, about Louis in the first group with Frank, Joe Benigno, Joe Gorga, and um, John Fuda. Pretty much all of them, except Joe Benigno, it appears, they all seem to have this, like, animosity against Louis right now, which we'll see more in part three. Oh, and it's funny, Joe Gorga is getting all fucking worked up, and Frank's like, oh, well, don't fight him, man, because Louis will kick your ass. He's not like Joe, Joe Judice. He will kick your ass. So, <laughs> little funny moment. We then get a segment on Jennifer's sham of a coffee reading. She went to the coffee reader, Angie. She was an RN, like, it's her, like, day job, and she took care of Nono when he was, like, in the, um, in the hospital. And she says that the reader, like, knew about the friction between Teresa and Melissa. She allegedly was like, oh, like, I don't really like Melissa. She never came to see no no he's in the hospital. All this bullshit. And I like, guess adding to how it was not a legitimate event. There's all this other backstory to it. And Andy tries to move on, but Jennifer, like, continues trying to, like, say her piece. And Andy just, like, speaks over her, just keeps on going. And allegedly, around this time, after part two aired... There's some reports about Andy uh, getting investigated for bullying Jennifer Aiden. It's like, he just spoke over it. Like, I don't know. I don't really believe that. I don't think he bullied Jennifer. There's some, like, a couple, a headline or two about it. Anyways, Jennifer then says that the one therapy session with Bill worked wonders. 
And, um, and he's like, oh, are you happy? And Jennifer, so happy. I wouldn't trade him for the world. I don't care. This is so fucking dramatic. I'm like, girl, the second Olivia, like, moves out, you guys are getting divorced. Like, I'm sorry. Like, it's just, I, I, I just fucking see it now. Uh, Andy then asks Margaret if she believes Jennifer, and Margaret just like, I believe she has the marriage that she wants. So she says that. A viewer question brings up how Jennifer's youngest is suffering over Margaret's revelation. And Margaret says, you know, I get why Jennifer is angry. I'm not taking that away from her. I understand. However, I will not take accountability for her children, like, hurting about this when she and Bill have had issues for quite some time. And Jennifer pushes back against this. There's all this stuff in Margaret and Jennifer. And then brings up Margaret calling Jennifer a drug addict, and they go back at it. Margaret had, doubles down on that, essentially. Even though Margaret apologized for it on Watch Happens Live, she's doubling down now, essentially. And Jennifer's like, you know, this is why I call Margaret old. It's not even because of her numerical age. It's because of shit like this. She's old lady energy. And while I may not have used those words to describe it, I have to almost agree with Jennifer with this one. It's like, Marge, like, she's just this antiquated, like, you're a, you're a drug addict. She sm Jennifer smokes weed. Like, okay, girl, like, calm down, fucking Ronald Reagan. Like, you know, like girl, shut up. Like, yeah, so I, I'm with Jennifer on that one, to be honest. I love Margaret, but yeah. A viewer then calls Jennifer hypocritical for what she did to Melissa. They're like, you are so upset with Margaret for airing out um, your bullshit with Bill Aiden, and yet here you are, you know, sewing this shit, you know, about Melissa and Joe. And all Jennifer can basically say is, sorry. Like, she's like, Melissa, I know sorry isn't enough, it was enough for me, but I'm sorry, okay? I'm like, whatever. So, yeah. And then Jen Fessler, because remember, um, Jen, uh, Jen and Jackie are still there. Uh, she asks, what was the reason for carrying it out at the finale party? She's asking Danielle this. And... And he was like, I was just for, it was for Melissa to squash it. It was to squash it. So, yeah. And then we focus in on Margaret's relationship with Teresa. Because, you know, they basically got along for most of the season. You know what I mean? It was, they weren't like best friends. But it, it, looking back, it might have been kind of Cold War-ish. Just kind of like not really associating, just doing her thing. You know what I mean? Separately. But, yeah, um, they're all good. But Margaret says that, um... Louis' antics towards the end, the whole Bo Deedle bullshit, talking about having foul on everyone, that was just a little bit too much. She says that Louis actually called her son at work and threatened him, and she says that her son works at a really secure facility, he's not really into being on the camera. I don't know if it's like a government office of some sort, or some like, really high, bit high up their business, I don't know, but she's like, very shook that Louis called her son at work and threatened him. Um, we then flash to Frank and Joe Gorga discussing how much of a sick fuck Louis is. Just talking about how he's just so dirty and grimy. Like, they're pissed at Louis. And that's why it's like, you know, we always talk about like, oh, where there's smoke, there's fire, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, girl, like, there's a lot of, like, allegations from different people. Like, it's, yeah. Margaret then provides phone records and they confirm that that is Louis' phone number. Teresa says that's just a fucking scam, and um, Andy confirms that I guess there's this housewife scam going around where, like, they're, like the whole cast has gotten spam calls that read as though they're coming from someone else on the cast. So there's that, but Margaret's like, no, because in order for that to work, you have to have their number saved on your phone, and this is completely different, blah, blah, blah. Just talking about this shit, again, Teresa's like, no, I wasn't it. She's claiming in ignorance on everything. Dolores then confirms that Margaret called her after her son got the alleged threat, and Margaret was hysterical. So Dolores does confirm this, and Teresa's like, wow, I'm surprised you didn't tell me you're supposed to be my friend. And Dolores is just like, to be honest, I'm not messing with this at all. I'm not doing, Dolores is smart. She's like, I'm not, I'm not on the receiving end of this bullshit. I'm not, you know, it's whatever. It got me wondering, because the next, in part three, when Frank and Tanya brings up, you know, the whole bullshit with Frankie and Louie, Dolores is like, oh, no, nothing happened, right? Nothing happened. It's like she knows what Louis is capable of, and so she's trying to remain cordial. You know, it's like, yeah, I just really see that. Margaret is pissed at Louis. She's like, I don't want to see his scamming self ever again. And he's like, well, you're going to see him right now. And she's like, yeah, he's gonna be sitting right there. And you're gonna be looking at him. You're gonna look all at him. You're gonna be looking at him like crazy. Teresa was being like, 
a dumb bitch in a lot of this reunion. Just fucking like, mm, mm, mm. like literally. I'm just like, girl, whatever. Of course, Teresa and Margaret go back and forth. Margaret calls Teresa a scammy bullshit criminal. Uh, Teresa calls Margaret a devil, and it's just getting really heated, but they're not yelling, it's just this really, ugh, you know what I mean? Um, Margaret says that Louis belittles Teresa, and that she's pathetic, and he gaslights her, and all this shit, and Teresa's pissed, and he says that they're both acting like assholes. Um, then he dismisses Jen Fessler and Jackie for preparing to welcome the men. We then see, like, there's like a little break time kind of thing. We see Danielle, she goes back to her little um, changing room with her husband, and she's whispering to him that, she's like, they set me up. They set me up. After on stage denying that she felt set up, she's now saying, they set me up. And I'm like, Danielle, you're so, you try to act all big and bad and shit like that, but, oh my God, like, Danielle, like, you have to get together, girl. You know what I mean? Um, and then goes backstage to talk to Louie. He's like, I'm really nervous. I don't want things to get violent, blah, blah, blah. Louis assures him that it won't. Um, he also goes and talks to Joe and asks him to like, not get out of his chair. The men enter the stage, they're all set up, and it's to be continued. So thank you so much for watching, and whew, stay tuned for more. Again, we have um, part three of the reunion coming up in, um, shortly, Orange County, and a double Atlanta episode. So stay tuned for that. Thanks again. Bye.